Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is the first week, couple weeks of Spookoplathon. It is the 1st of October right now. I have just filmed, edited, uploaded my TBR. It is the evening. I am not feeling very well. I am in fact ill, have come down with a cold which was not needed on top of the tiredness and burnt out vibes at the moment. Fingers crossed it gets better, but it feels like one that's gonna get worse. So we're gonna see how these first few days of Spookoplathon go. I was meant to be in Manchester for work tomorrow. I live in London um, for a big conference and I have made the call to not go because A, I don't feel very well and I'm pretty convinced I'm gonna wake up tomorrow feeling a lot worse. And B, no one else at the conference needs this. I just don't need to be in a room of hundreds of people all day and spread this round. So we'll see how I'm feeling and whether I'm able to work. But as I say, it's the 1st of October. It's the first day of Spookoplathon. I have done my first role in my TBR video, which I will link. And it has got me Moonbound by Robin Sloan. The prompt was present. It's one of the three tarot card prompts. And it's a book you really want to read. And as I said in this video, this was the one I really wanted to get to. So it worked out perfectly, especially being a bit ill and the weather being really grim. This is like a cozy sci-fi fantasy. So it's exactly what I need right now. I don't know much more than that. It's by one of my favourite authors or, well, I've only read two books from them, but someone I've really enjoyed both those books from. And I'm really excited. It is set in the world of Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore, which is a book I really liked um, by Robin Sloan, but I don't believe it's actually that related. We'll see. But I'm really excited. I know nothing about it. All I remember from the blurb is wizards, but I don't want to reread it and find out. So. I'm about to cozy up for the evening. Try and get through a chunk of this. Other than that, this week, the, <laughs> the only real thing I have going on is Thursday is when season three of Heartstopper is coming out. I will not go on about it too much now. I'm sure I will later. Heartstopper is my favorite TV show of all time. It has usurped a TV show called Smash, which is a musical TV show that was my favorite TV show for a solid 10 years. And I've just finished my rewatch of season one and season two in anticipation of season three coming on Thursday. I could not be more excited. I could not be less mentally prepared, especially if I end up being a bit ill and a bit fragile. I'm so going to be ruined by that show, but <laughs> oh well. And then other than that, I have some vague plans, but not a lot. Again, tonight before heading to Manchester, I was meant to be at a Waterstones book event, but again, elected to not go because no one else needs the cold. So that's a shame, but... Nonetheless, I'm going to cozy up and read. I'm doing quite a lot of crafty stuff at the moment. I need to do some journaling for my reading journal. I have got really into bracelet making after the Taylor Swift bracelet making malarkey. It's another Taylor Swift piece of merch. I got really into it and then got Christy into it and then we've enabled each other and bought way too many materials, which is way too much fun. I've also been enjoying making these mini Lego models I've got a few of, so I'm sure we will see various bits of that over the next couple of weeks. But yeah, we're attempting vlogging. I'm starting Moonbound. I'll give you a proper blurb once I'm in and have one. But I'm so excited to give this a go and so nervous at the same time because this could be five stars. It could be absolutely not. And I really hope it is. I also got loads of new cozy lights. I've got no loads of like new cozy pillows. I'm living my best cozy life, making my house a home and I'm loving it. But for now I need to read. halfway through Moonbound. I am enjoying this, but I'm not fully sure how I feel about it yet, if I'm being honest. I feel like it's written from a really interesting perspective. So a little bit of a plot summary for this, as far as I can tell it. You are following a world 13,000 years in the future or something ridiculous, really, really far in the future. And it's a very like anachronistic world. So there's elements of what we would recognise in present day, there's elements of what you'd recognise as like medieval, there's all sorts. And it kind of all just goes together, which is quite interesting. But what you are following is like a consciousness that I believe is like a fungus that was developed at some point to be implanted into humans and then to act as basically an archivist and a uh, What's the word I'm looking for? A chronicler, that's what I'm looking for. So it basically just records people's lives. That's the perspective you're hearing from. 
when it's just kind of moved into someone new and so it is discovering what's different about the world and what isn't and then things start happening and this adventure starts but there's not really anything driving it at first but like we're getting into it and it's an enjoyable just watch what the adventure is and there's sci-fi elements there's fantasy elements and there's some really fascinating world building and I'm loving seeing all the different places we're going and things we're doing but I don't really know what we're doing overall <laughs> I don't know I'm a bit confused um but I'm I'm intrigued and excited to keep going because I'm having a good time even though I'm just kind of along for the ride and don't know what's pulling us forward but as I say about halfway through really keen to try and finish this very soon if I can it reads quickly so I'm optimistic but we will see we will see I will also say I'm gonna put a photo up on the screen the coolest thing in the world about this book I didn't know this someone pointed it out in the comments is that the cover is glow in the dark wild incredible that photo is taken on night mode it's not quite that bright but I wanted to show it off because it's cool but other than that what has been going on <laughs> I watched Heartstopper um when it came out I had a grand old time and was you know completely broken so I'm not gonna talk loads about Heartstopper I might one day do a video all about why it means so much to me but it's such an intensely like personal show to me it's as I say it's like my favorite show of all time in the sense of like I love it and it's fun and I love the characters and the story and the this and that but it's actually got like a really close meaning to me for many a reason it's an exceedingly important show to me and I'm sure one day I'll talk about that but not in this video so I find it kind of hard to talk about Heartstopper. I'm never gonna be someone that like does a reaction video to watching the new series. Um, I like literally have friends that love the show as well and have said, oh, should we watch the new season together? And I'm like, no, I have to sit alone and watch it. Like that's the only way I can do it. And yeah, so I love season three. I continue to just adore all the characters. I continue to be absolutely astonished by how true the adaptation is from the graphic novels it's it's just remarkable like obviously the biggest thing is having Alice write both mediums makes a big difference and we all say it the actors are literally copy and pasted from those graphic novels slightly crazy that they found them all but it's absolutely incredible I also really really loved the plot lines that were introduced that are not covered in the graphic novels I just think it's going from strength to strength and building and I love it so much I knew from all the interviews and obviously from knowing the story from the graphic novels that it was going to be a lot sadder than other seasons but I did not expect to be quite as heartbroken as I was <laughs> I was texting Christy a bit whilst I was watching it and was laughing like I think like episode three I was like haha cry count is it like nine so far and then episode four was like there's just no point counting anymore because I just cried for like the last 30 odd minutes solid yeah so I need to watch it again but I think I need to take a moment to do that and I'm busy so who knows but those are the overall thoughts I had a great time that is a surprise to absolutely no one and I'm very excited to watch it again in the future when I feel prepared but for now reading let's see if we can make some progress I did it I'm so chuffed I was not sure I was gonna get through 200 plus pages of this but I did it first book of Spookopthathon finished and it's what I've been anticipating for ages and it was decently chunky I will say it read very quickly but nonetheless I'm proud thoughts on this I don't know <laughs> I really don't know I think I said similar when I was part way through really enjoyed the vibes really enjoyed the writing got much much more into it in the second half got much more into like the plot and where we were going and what we were doing and I really liked our characters but it was still a little bit meandery but I think I really really enjoyed it it's one I need to sit with for a hot minute I think things I would compare this to are the 13 and a half lives of Captain Bluebear which I read a couple months ago so that's a kind of YA I think and this is definitely adult though in some ways has YA vibes because your main character is like 12 maybe 13 ish so like it's not you know super mature but the themes and the writing doesn't feel YA but then it's also very similar to In the Lives of Puppets especially at the beginning in the terms of 
they're kind of going on this quest and we don't really know why but we have these cool friendly characters and we're gonna go with it but yeah overall really enjoyable reading experience very very glad to have finally read it is it my favorite robin sloan maybe not but i also don't know what would be because when i reread mr penumbra's earlier this year i still loved it but slightly differently to how i did before so i don't really know but greatly enjoyed it had a fantastic time very chuffed to be done with it and although it's very late and i won't be reading anything else tonight because i need to get to bed so soon i just wanted to get this done um i really wanted to do another roll and i have to admit the desire to get another prompt is what pulled me through finishing this so i think this game is unsurprisingly going to be very good for me in terms of what i'm like feeling reading next what i want to read i genuinely do not know i've got my tbr laid out in my office um but it's the same books as were featured in my october tbr if you've seen that some rereads some slightly horror -y things there's a good variety but i have no idea what i'm in the mood for the thing i'd say probably most that i'm in the mood for would be the two volumes of the fangs manga that i have one to reread two to read new but I think that's partially because they're manga and they're quick and they're fun and much as I'm doing these roles and following the prompts I will definitely say something like her manga may well get slotted in as and when I want to read it on top of that but we'll see but I need to change my camera setup and work out what we're reading is this the best setup I've ever had absolutely not is it upside down for me yes yes it is but we're gonna go with it anyway because it's late and I can't be bothered to do anything else we ended up on present last time so that is where we're starting i have got my dice up on my phone again you can't really see that but i promise i'll bring it in shot to actually roll here we go what have we got 11 big numbers okay let's see what 11 gets me to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven bone okay so bone is up next which i believe is sort of like that ivory bone color on the cover let me check yeah a book with a bone colored cover anywhere from white to light brown i don't remember my whole tbr but i think this might be causing me trouble let me go look okay as expected this may cause me issues i have two options both stretch the prompt and i'm not sure if i want to read either of them right now but we'll talk about them. But there is consideration of using the roll again and read two books for the other prompt rule. Though that does slightly terrify me given how many prompts on this board are going to be hard for me to fulfill. But my two options, the first, so as you said, it's white through light brown. This cover is not predominantly white, but it, but it has lots of whites down here with like copper, which feels almost bronzy foiling. That's really white, actually. I hadn't considered that. I, mm, I feel like I would get away with that. I would feel comfortable using that for the prompt, even a bit of a stretch, because, you know, who's going to tell me not to? I thought this light would be good for this. I think it's really bad. I do apologise. The other option is the bone season. This is not the right colour, in the slightest, but it literally has bone in the title, and I'm aware that's not the prompt. But could it work? These are both rereads. You know what? I need to do it and I'm gonna keep putting it off. Divine Rivals might be the shout. There is potential I could get through this this weekend. Potential. Because I've got a couple hours tomorrow and then I've got all of Sunday morning and it's a pretty quick read. This could be a fun weekend challenge. I think think we're gonna go with divine rivals with the potential addition if i may well end up reading bangs volume one and two alongside this if i fancy something a bit different over the weekend okay well this was not gonna be what i pick up next so good for the game um very quick synopsis for anyone that doesn't know what divine rivals is this follows two main characters who both work at the same kind of journalism newspaper company they are competing for the same promotion and there are secret magical typewriters and they are sending letters between them and one of the characters realizes between the two of them one doesn't know who they're being sent to believes it might be their brother and a romance forms it's in like a kind of world war ii ish setting but the war is a fantasy war i've read it before it ends in a very interesting place i want to read the sequel because it's only two books and i'm doing that next month so i need to do my reread of this so i guess that's what i'm reading next it's pretty short it's like 300 odd pages i'm getting out the likes it's really bad 
and I remember it being a super quick read. So I guess this is what I'm reading next? I did not see this coming. This was like not even in my mind as my next choice, but that is the joy of this game. So probably won't pick it up tonight, but tomorrow I'm starting Divine Rivals. It's been a few days again. It's Monday evening, but I've but I've, I've not read a lot. I've not I've not done much of interest. Um but I'll give you the update. It's been a very nice chill weekend. I'm aware I said that my goal was to read Divine Rivals over the weekend. That's that's not happened. I think we're like 60 pages in, page 61. So definitely did not read all of this over the last two days. I've had a decent bit on with like a friend's birthday and I have choir on th um, Thursday, Sunday, which is the majority of the afternoon. So yeah, not had a ton of time, but then I've also been doing some very nice, very chill things. I, for some reason, a week or two ago began like properly revamping my office and reorganizing it. I moved into this apartment coming up on a year ago now. I've been here about 10, 11 months, moved around new year and kind of just made do in the office. Like I've got furniture for the whole place and the office was pretty good, but it was the place where it was most like, just put things where they can go and make do. And over the last 10 months, we've also acquired more things and it's just not been great. And it's been messy the whole time because too many things don't have a home. So I decided a few weeks ago that I'm just gonna sort it the hell out. And I'm doing that gradually over the last few weeks and kind of did a lot of that over the weekend. I got some of the more storage stuff in because I do a lot of journaling, a lot of crafty stuff. So needed suitable storage for all of those bits and have some new things which really helped that. And similarly, I've, you know, do loads of crafty stuff. So I do a lot of like bracelet making and stuff. And so I've bought some new organizers for my beads. So I spent honestly a huge proportion of the weekend organizing, which I enjoyed more than I should. Um, but I did, I did read Fangs Volume 1. I mentioned I might read this even though it's not for a prompt. And I did exactly that. I literally read this first thing Saturday morning. I forgot why I loved this so much. I remember that I loved it, but I couldn't remember why. It was not one of the first manga I read when I got back into manga, but near the beginning. So I did wonder, having not picked it up in a year and a half or so, was it just, it was like new and exciting. No, this slaps. This was so good. And I'm very excited to get to volume two because this was a reread and it's so quick. I'm not fussed that it was outside of the role. I am going to try, it's buried under things, and get volume two in for a roll if I can. But Divine Rivals first. So my goal for this evening is I think minimum page 200 would be nice because I think this is about 360 and that makes it possible. I might finish it tomorrow evening, we will see. Um, but I also have fun things to do and I need to have dinner and it's already like six o'clock. So we'll see how things go. And if I have the self restraint to do that instead of sorting out some of the new beading and stickers and crafty stuff that's arrived. I totally forgot the other vitally important thing I need to tell you about, which is one of the other kind of crafty adjacent things I've got into is mini Lego kits because I like using my hands. I think that's why I do so much crafty stuff is I like using my hands, especially when I'm watching TV and stuff. And sometimes I just want to follow instructions and don't want to have to think about what I'm creating. So I've got really into little Lego kits and I made this little dude on Saturday night whilst watching Strictly Come Dancing, just a little little lying down red panda. He is adorable. I'm a little bit obsessed. I feel like he needs a name, but that is not a problem for right now. But yes, you needed to meet him, but that's it. That's it. I'm gonna go get some dinner and sit down and start reading pretty much as soon as possible um, to hopefully get through a good chunk this evening. And if I get to page 200, might keep going, might stop and do some other fun organizing stuff. We'll see, we'll see what the vibe is. It is the next day and I've just finished Divine Rivals. I got through a pretty good chunk of this yesterday, got to just pay past page 200 and then I read a little bit before work, a little bit lunchtime and a bit after work to have finished this up. I really enjoyed this. This was a reread because I'm reading Ruthless Vows in November with a friend, so I needed to reread this first. So I have read this before, but I enjoyed it so much more this time. I feel like when I first read it, A, it was super hyped, which always makes it difficult, especially as Christy, this is one of her like favorite books. But also I didn't really know what I was gonna get because it's kind of fantasy romance with gods, but like it's also just kind of like almost what feels like a World War II kind of story. So I feel like last time I didn't know what to expect, whereas this time I knew exactly what to expect and actually, and it actually made me enjoy it 
way more. I really, really enjoyed this. I would be very tempted to dive straight into Ruthless Vows right now, but A, I'm reading that in November, and B, I have other things I need to read this month. But with that done, reread out the way, we need to do the next roll. Starting at Bone, let's see what we get. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bram Stoker. Okay, yet again, the gods are in my favour. I say yet again. Divine Rivals was actually not necessarily what I would have chosen, but this is exactly what I wanted. Bram Stoker, read a vampire book, Fangs Volume 2. I am so excited for this. So excited. As we've already seen, I read Fangs Volume 1 in this vlog and loved it. This basically follows vampires but in our modern world and you're following someone who's been a vampire for a very long time and has just found someone very recently turned and is kind of taking care of him and it is like many of these stories a different take on how vampire culture works how it fits in with like the human world etc etc so very excited to give this a read but because it's a manga and it's only going to take me like an hour max to read and it's half eight and i want to be reading later than that I'm going to do my next role so that I can also choose my next book now. Starting on Bram Stoker, we're going to roll again. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Spooky. Hi, editing Mads here in the same hoodie because I'm apparently incapable of wearing anything else at the moment. It is a good long while since I filmed that roll, and on editing, I have discovered I rolled a double. I didn't realise I rolled a double. Didn't notice that at the time. Um, yeah, so... Going forward, in the next vlog, after this one, I will make sure to account for that double. Not too hard to do, as the way I will do it is reading two books for the prompt, which is spooky, and I'm reading a lot of spooky books, as it is the season. And I have some very good options, which I'll mention in about five seconds in this vlog. But yes, oops, we'll make sure that is rectified in the next video. Back to me choosing my next read. Okay, considering I don't really know what I want to read, this is both a really helpful prompt and a really unhelpful prompt because it's very vague. But I got spooky and the prompt quite literally says it's up to your interpretation. I've said before, I'm not a big horror reader, but this kind of fits pretty much all the remaining books on my TBR, I feel like. But I have no idea which of these I want to read or what I'm in the mood for. But we have Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado, which I actually started October last year, read one of the stories and then stopped. So we'll probably just continue on from there because I feel like I remember the first one quite well. We'll see. We have A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee, which is, I think, witchy boarding school sapphic vibes that's about all i know but it's victoria lee who i love we have the woods all black by lee mandelo which i mean just from the cover definitely gives the spookiest vibes but i think it's like weird novella is pretty much all i know and seasonal fears by shauna Maguire, which to be honest this is probably the least spooky but i i think middle game fell into the camp so i would i would let it count but as I said, I really don't know which of these I'm in the mood for. So I think after I've read Fangs, I might do a little try a few pages, try a chapter challenge and feedback and then we'll see what I choose to read next. I'll most likely read about five pages, if that, of each. I may not do all of them. What tends to happen when I do things like this is suddenly one catches my interest and I just keep going with it. But I'll let you know. We'll do, we'll do some ratings of the first couple pages and see what strikes my fancy right now. It's also a good way to get me excited for these books later in the month because I'm really bad when I make a TBR of convincing myself that I'm not excited for them anymore because I've been on my TBR for a few weeks. So this is a great way to get me back excited. I finished Fangs Volume 2. I love this series and I'm so excited because I bought this, I think not long after it came out, which I think was spring last year, 2023. And so I've had this for way too long, firstly, before I got around to reading it, but we're here now, we've done it now. And I hadn't heard any inklings of volume three. And I was nervous. I was like, are we getting a volume three? Am I gonna have to wait ages? And I looked it up just before starting this and it comes out on the 29th of October in like three weeks. So I am deeply excited. 
cannot wait for volume three. I'm scared because I think there's going to be a volume four and who knows how long the wait will be for that. But this was great. The atmosphere and the suspense just keeps building. I love the characters. I love the relationships. I'm excited, but it's getting kind of late because I procrastinated for a while. So I need to get on with my trier chapter, few pages, etc. So let's give it a go. I don't know where I'm going to start. I am going to do a few pages of each of them, but I am considering not reading a lesson in vengeance right now simply because I'm going to New York in just over a week and I think this could be a really good one to read while on holiday because I think it'd be quite an easy read so debating saving this one until then but we'll see I'm gonna start with the woods all black okay I've only read like the dedication and I kind of want to read this one. I'm going to do a excuse the language, I'm just going to read it verbatim because it was written this way intentionally by the author. To all the brilliant, angry fags and dykes and gender outlaws who came before and who taught me how to survive, this one's for you. That's how you get me interested in a book. That is how you get me interested in a book. Okay, read few pages I'm literally doing two to three pages of each we're not doing huge sections this is a strong option I feel like I've been intimidated by this for some reason I thought it'd be a really difficult read even though it's pretty short I think because it's weird I thought it'd be really challenging but actually obviously it needs to get weird it started strong so this it's a strong contender I feel like I need to rate it like out of 10, but I don't know how to rate it out of 10 because it wasn't necessarily the most interesting start, but I think it's gonna get very weird. Strong contender and a good one to get ticked off because it's short and then I might be able to read one more book before going to New York, which would also be good. Book number two, as I'm holding it, we're gonna do seasonal fizz. Unsurprisingly, another very, very strong start. I think I mentioned in my TBR, I read Middle Game when it first came out, whenever that was, and then reread it, I think early 2022 in preparation for this, I want to say. Yeah, this came out in 2022. So I've now owned this like two and a half years and still haven't got to it, even though I literally reread Middle Game to read this. Um, I got scared of it, don't know why. Got really intimidated, thought it would be difficult um, so another very strong start. It actually, interestingly, starts with a passage from um, another book. So in Middle Game, there is this book series, like this children's book series referenced called The Up and Under, written by A. Deborah Barker. And I remember when I read it, I didn't know if it was referencing like some real books or what. And so I googled it and it turned out Sean Maguire was going to write those books under the name A. Deborah Barker. I now own all four of them. I've read precisely zero of them, but this starts with an extract from one of those books, which has made me really want to read those, which is also good because I need to get on with that. But I'm intrigued and I like how this is written. So that is another very strong contender. Very strong contender, will not lie. But we have two more to do. So let's do that and then we'll, we'll do some strategizing. I'm gonna go into Her Body and Other Parties first and I'm gonna just read a couple of pages of the second story in this. I'm a stuck record. Another really strong option. I, as I say, we'll get into strategizing in a minute. I don't tend to read short story collections as full books. I like splitting them up. So this may get chosen for this prompt. We're, I'm gonna do the last one and then we'll discuss. So finishing up with a lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I'm, as I said, not sure I'm gonna pick this right now because I may want to save it for my trip to New York, but I'm very excited to read the first few pages and get myself hyped for it because again, I've owned this for way too long. Okay, chapter's done, decision-making time. First decision, I'm saving this for New York. I said this at the beginning, I just think this is a good level of fun and atmospheric 
and easy to read on long plane journeys and when I'm busy and having to put it down and pick it up in smaller increments. So this is for New York. That's decision one, one down. We have three left. I'm thinking, thinking, I need to check this is gonna work, that this is going to be my official pick for Spooky as a prompt. And because I will read this in bits, what I may do is do another roll to hopefully get me one of these. Ideally seasonal fears, simply because I want to read both of these before New York and I go in about nine days. And I think it should be possible to read both. I just don't have a ton of spare time over the next week. Um, and my weekend is super, super busy, which doesn't help. So I would probably prefer to start with seasonal fears because I'm confident I can get that done in nine days. And then if I only just get that done, doesn't matter. Whereas if I spend two, three days reading this and then I'm halfway through this, I have to take a very chunky book to New York, which is not ideal. But I would be happy either way. So I think that's the plan, but, but I am going to very quickly go and read through the prompts and check that there are enough options on the board that by the end of the month, I will have got both of these, <laughs> is the hope. And I think that will be the case. I think this is actually one of the more difficult ones to get to match a prompt, but I'm gonna check that logic before I commit to this decision. Okay, decision made. I'm terrified. I'm committing. Her Body and Other Parties is what I am officially reading for... What prompt am I on? Spooky. I'm losing the plot. This is my official pick for Spooky. And we're gonna do the next roll now because I'll read a story of this before I go to bed and then I will be picking up my next like main book and we're just gonna hope that I get a prompt that lets me do what I want to do. Okay starting on Spooky we're going for five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay and that is the last roll for a while. I've done a, done a couple tonight and I got big book, book over 500 pages. This is like 490. I don't even care. I'm claiming that. It's it's long. I'm For me, that's a big book. That's 100% a big book. And I do not care if technically it isn't quite as long as it's meant to be in the prompt. But that means my current two reads are for Spooky, Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado, and Seasonal Fears by Shauna Maguire. And I'll be reading these sort of in tandem. This will be like my primary fiction read. And then obviously this is fiction as well, but I am imagining I will read roughly a story a day, which will probably take us very nicely to when I'm intending to end this vlog. Yeah, might have to do two one day, but I think I can do that. So that's the reading. I'm now gonna go update my reading journal with all of the events that have happened tonight and go to bed. That's it, probably won't read much more, but might try and read one of these stories and just a tiny bit of this to get into it. But I'm gonna go now. It has yet again been a good few days since I last updated. Oops, I have been so busy over the weekend, just so, so busy, but it is now Tuesday, 15th of October. So we are dead on halfway through the month and this vlog is gonna to end tomorrow because I fly to New York on Thursday not quite sure how that's come around so quickly, bit ridiculous. But anyway, I have tonight and tomorrow evening to finish getting ready to go to New York, finish all the laundry and the packing and the cleaning and the mentally preparing, but also finish some books. As I said, super busy at the weekend. So read not a lot, a bit, not a lot. But starting with Her Body and Other Parties, I am now a good chunk of the way through. I think I have maybe two, maybe three stories left. I think three. I have three stories left. The plan was to do one a day yesterday, today, tomorrow, but yesterday was a complete fail of an evening. I was exhausted, so I just did nothing. And today I'm a bit more awake. I've been in the office all day though, so we'll see if I get tired as the evening progresses. But I'm enjoying this. There is one story I actually kind of skipped. It's a really long one called Especially Heinous. I read like five pages of it and skipped it because it was going through Law and Order SVU episodes and I don't know if it was making a comment on each or almost doing a plot summary but subverted. I don't know because I don't watch Law and Order SVU so it kind of meant nothing to me and it was 60 pages long so after five I was like I'm not gonna get anything from this so I skipped that one but I have three more to go so I need to do at least one today maybe two 
I'm enjoying it though. Some stories more than others, as is the way. I feel like some of them I'm really just not getting the point but some of them I'm enjoying. And then obviously my main read has been Seasonal Fears. I was really hoping to finish this over the weekend and that did not happen at all because I had zero time. I don't know why I thought I was gonna do that, but I'm currently on page 360 out of just under 500. So I'm definitely making really good progress. Um, I'm aware, I don't think I gave any explanation of what this is. This is the sequel to Middle Game and Middle Game follows two characters that basically these alchemists, there's no point holding us up, it's black. These alchemists have created these two children who will basically house a concept that is like empirical to the world. So in Middle Game they house like language and maths and it's very interesting, I love it, it's one of my favourite books. And Seasonal Fears, I wasn't sure what it was going to be but basically similar concept but very different but the seasons incarnate and I'm loving it won't lie first 60 pages didn't have a clue what was going on was loving my life having a great time not a single clue what was actually happening in the book but by about page 100 I got really into it and as I say, on like 360 now so really really good chunk of the way through I would really love to finish this tonight because I have like 120 pages left so it's not impossible but it's you know six o'clock because I'm home from the office I need to eat I need to do some laundry and you know other things and at some point I need to edit this video <laughs> that's fun so I have no idea if I'm gonna have time to finish this or not tonight but I'm gonna try it just depends on whether I can actually focus like in theory this should be about two hours of reading which should be doable will I actually do it in practice is a whole different question but really really enjoying this so much more than I expected to because I've heard in comparison to middle game quite negative things about this and it like not living up to the hype or expectations so glad I'm really enjoying this and so intrigued about what tidal creatures is going to be but the other really fun thing and I may have already mentioned this I've not vlogged in many days so I don't remember but there is a series of novellas I'll grab them this series of novellas also by Shauna Maguire but under the pseudonym of a Deborah Baker who is kind of a character-ish in um, that book. In Middle Game, Over the Woodward Wall, there was like passages from it included. And in this one, Along the Saltwise Sea is included in passages. So it's made me really intrigued to finally get to these because they do like directly tie in. So that's really exciting and probably not before the end of the year, but definitely these two I'm gonna be trying to get to soon. And when I read Tidal Creatures, I'll try and read Into the Wind Wrapped Wilds as well. And this is making me intrigued as to whether there's only going to be four books in this series or if there's more or what the plan is. Curious but very excited to finally actually be motivated to get these because I've been putting them off for way too long. But that is not a today problem. Today's problem is to try and finish Seasonal Fears, try and do at least one story in the Carmen Maria Machado so that tomorrow I can do my next rolls before I fly to New York on Thursday which in theory will be another vlog. I'm rubbish at vlogging on holiday especially when I'm with friends because I get awkward so we'll see but that's the hope. But with that, and very little time to spare, I'm, I'm gonna try and go and start reading. This is new. This is the update for the week. I am now someone that has glasses. Bit crazy, bit wild. My whole family has glasses. I've always been the one that doesn't, but I do now. They will not be glasses I'm gonna wear 24 seven. So I'm actually gonna take them off now because I've had them on most of the day and it's starting to give me a headache because I'm getting used to them. Um, they may need to correct an astigmatism, meaning I get flares around all the lights that I see and it's a bit annoying, I won't lie. So finally I'm gonna get it checked out and yeah, got an astigmatism, have glasses now, basically need to use them when looking at screens and when in the dark looking at bright lights. So the theatre, which is the main reason I got them, because I see a lot of theatre. But that's a thing, how fun. Anyway, it's Wednesday. I fly to New York tomorrow. So this is probably going to be near enough the last update of the vlog. Not quite, because I have one more book to finish, but near enough. But 
I did finish Seasonal Fears yesterday, which I am far too proud of. I procrastinated and didn't think I was gonna get it done, but I did and I'm very proud of myself. I really enjoyed this. I, I think I said when I was quite near the end, like I was really nervous, I wouldn't like this, but I really enjoyed it. The only thing I would say, which I think knocked down the rating a little bit for me, but it's still like a 4.5, I loved it, is it was like building this tension and the stakes the whole way through. And then I feel like that evaporated very quickly. And I was surprised by that. I suddenly was like, oh, oh, like all is well. Okay, cool. So that was not necessarily what I was looking for. I don't want like thriller vibes, but yeah, it all came together very neatly, very quickly, given how much was being built up, but I still loved it. And I am so intrigued to get hold of and read Tidal Creatures. Probably won't be this year because I have too much to read before the end of the year, but next year, because I am excited. For her body and other parties, I still have one more story I need to finish. I'm in the middle of it at the moment, so I think I've got maybe like 30-ish pages left. How much? 40 pages left, it turns out. So need to get that one done. Um, I read, I'm reading them out of order because various things are happening and fitting in with times, but I did DNF another story yesterday and then I did read one very much just uh, it's not the right time for me to be reading that so I'm not going to read it so I'm going to read the last one that I'm planning to read now basically um this evening get it done and then I'm going to call this book finished there's obviously two stories I've not read one of which I may go back to in the future when I'm in the right headspace for it but I'm happy with that I've said it before I'm not a huge short story person I just wanted to read this because a local book club I'm doing this is their book for this month and I've been saying I'm gonna go to that club every single month and I never do and I never read the book so when this one came up I was like okay I own that I started it do it <laughs> and so I did but therefore I need to choose my next book so it is officially time for the next Bukopathon roll. I'm now realizing I may have actually closed all the tabs I needed, which is not the most helpful thing. I'm going to do the roll in this vlog. I'm not necessarily going to tell you the book. You might have to watch the next one, maybe because I'm indecisive. We'll see what I get. But if you've been, if you've watched the vlog up to here, you will know. Shock horror, I fly to New York tomorrow. Said it enough times, but there are some specific books I was hoping to take on that trip. And considering I'm gonna be on like, you know, an eight hour long flight with multiple hours to kill in the airport tomorrow, I'm definitely hoping one of those comes up. So depending on the prompt, you may be able to infer what I'm probably gonna pick up. But nonetheless, let's do this roll. And then I'll come back to you later to give you final thoughts on the Her Body and Other Parties. But that'll be it, that'll be the vlog. But let's do this first. So starting on Big Book, because that is where we ended up last time, we are going with nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, past. Okay, we're back round to the Tarot Spaces with Past, which is a book you should have already read or has been on a previous TBR. I very much know what that is gonna be. That is a very easy choice. I've mentioned it already in this vlog. So that will be kicking off the next vlog. But for now, I'm gonna go finish The Common Room Retardo and I'm gonna edit this video so that you will get to see it maybe sometime soon. I did it. I finished The Common Room Retardo or as finished as I'm gonna get. The video is near enough edited minus this clip. So we're gonna give thoughts, we're gonna wrap up and we're gonna call it a day. We're gonna get to bed because as if I've not said it enough times, I'm flying tomorrow and I should probably get some good sleep. So thoughts on the Carmen Rue Machado. I always struggle with short story collections and I said this before and I'll say it again, I'm not the biggest short story person. I, it's just not a format I tend to get on with particularly well. And I think that was true in this. There was a couple stories I really enjoyed. So I quite liked the first story, The Husband's Stitch. I kind of liked Inventory. Mothers was okay, especially Heinous is the one I didn't read. Real Women Have Bodies, I loved. That was the standout for me, along with I really liked the unsettling nature of difficult at parties. And then Eight Bites I didn't read, and I'm not gonna lie, The Resident was the last one I read, and I have to say I skimmed it. I think I was lost by that point. I didn't know what was going on. It wasn't, I wasn't getting the point. So, mixed bag, glad to have finally read it because it has been sat on my TBR for forever, and I also started reading this October last year, so very glad for what it ticked off. But it wasn't my favourite, but short stories aren't my favourite format, so that's to be expected. 
But with that, that's my reading for the first half, roughly, of Spookoplathon finished. And I have to say, so chuffed with this. I, that is so much more than I would normally read in a couple of weeks. I'm very proud. Um, so I read Moonbound for the present prompt. So a book you want to read right now. Loved it. Great fun. Four stars, something like that. I read Fangs Volume 1, not for a prompt, just because I really wanted to reread it. I read Divine Rivals for the Bone prompt, which is a white to light brown cover. There we go. And this was also a reread, and I really, really enjoyed it, more so than when I first read it, and I'm very excited to read Ruthless Vows next month. I then read Fangs Volume 2 for the Bram Stoker prompt, which is a book featuring vampires. Perfect, it works. I then picked up Her Body and Other Parties for the Spooky prompt and Seasonal Fears for Big Book. And I also loved this. This was probably my favourite of the books I've read, though very closely followed by Fangs, just because I love it so much. But honestly, I feel mean. With the exception of this, I have really, really loved all of these. They're half back to front, but good enough. I said it in my little editing interlude earlier, but I promise I will account for the double roll in the next video. I completely missed that when I did it. So I will be reading an extra spooky prompt book in that next video to make up for that. My bad. But yeah, that is a super strong start for me for Spookoplathon. I am really, really chuffed. It's going to slow down from here probably with my holiday, but who knows? The long flights might help me out. But that is it for this video. If you've made it all the way to the end, please leave either a dice emoji or some kind of autumnal seasonal emoji down below to let me know you are here. Let me know how your reading is going so far this month, any fun things you've been up to. If you're taking part in Spookoplathon, obviously let me know how that is going for you. But that is it. So if you enjoyed this, please leave a thumbs up or subscribe. It really helps support the channel and stick around to see the next video in a couple of weeks. But that's it for this one. So bye and see you in the next one.